Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad to have you checking out our journey where Chris and I share with you the behind the scenes of what we do in a daily day to day. <laughs> you never know what adventures we'll be on if we're doing a DIY home project, if we're just hanging out, or this has actually been the holiday week. This is New Year's Eve when I'm filming this and boy, had it been a busy two days. We went to two auctions <laughs> picked up a marketplace find, which you saw in our last video, and then we are closing a booth. So if you have followed our channel, you know that I started off with just one booth. And the story of getting a booth is I, I answer this question on personal emails all the time. When I started this journey, my children had graduated. Our children had graduated from high school. And I was kind of, you know, like, okay, now what do you do? As a busy mom, as a sports mom, a very involved parent. I don't think I was a helicopter parent, but we won't ask my kids that. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'd always love to do home projects. We always love to do DIYs. So I was just kind of looking for something to fill my time. And I loved decor and I loved Philippine furniture for my own personal use. And I'd always get asked questions of how did I do that? When did, you know, long story short, I started a YouTube channel teaching people how to do stuff like that. And then I needed an out of how to sell it. So how I sold it was I would picture it on Facebook Marketplace. So, which is a great out. Um, I don't know how every area's marketplace is a little bit different. So what I did is I would do a piece and I would sell it. I would do a small piece and I would sell it. And, and then, I mean, it was just, the turnover was amazing. And the nice thing about that is I was building a follow, following. I was having people then, are you doing another piece? Let me know as soon as you get a piece done, which led to it being so busy that then I was looking for a booth to run. So I just happened to email a lady that owns an antique mall, which was my favorite antique mall that I've ever been at, that I visited quite often. So just by chance, she had something opening up. So that's long story short, built my following via Facebook, got enough people that were local that liked my stuff. And then I was able to then stop selling so much on Facebook, which is, if you know, is time consuming and you do have the, you know, the discussion of prices and then you do have the no shows. And, um, so it was nice having a booth. So we started off our booth as an antique craft booth, you know, our more crafts than antiques. So it was a lot of flipping in it back in the day. If you followed our channel long enough, you know, that we, I was all black and white. I still love black and white y'all. I, I, that will always be my passion. So it's just funny when you look back at your booth and you look, you know, I was just like getting, you know, ideas and searching social media and some downtime that I don't really have. But I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, my booth was all black and white and I painted everything and I thought I had to touch everything and I thought I had to do this. You know, I, I didn't think I could just clean something up and just resell it. You know, I thought that's what everybody wanted. And then times change. Then the next thing you know, everybody's doing black and white. And then you look in, in <laughs> at craft shows and um, spaces and that everybody's, we teach too well on YouTube, I guess. But anyway, um, so then crafts kind of like slow down in selling. You know, I, probably, the, probably the black and white slow down in selling. Um, so then I'm like, oh, you know, I was still Goodwill shopping. I was still thrift store, store shopping. But that market in our area has become saturated. There's just so many resellers. Um, it's not even worth my time anymore to hit my local thrift stores because I see all the resellers there. They're all there. They're all there. They're all waiting for that one item to come out on that cart that they can resell. So, which then took Chris to start looking, you know, that he wanted to be more involved in the buying aspect. He loved, you know, he didn't really get time to go to thrift stores because he works a nine to five job. So he started looking at auctions because estate sales always start on Thursdays. Garage sales seem to always start on Wednesdays, Thursdays in this area. So he was looking for sales that were on Saturday so that he could go 
and he could enjoy the buying experience because it is, it's, it's adrenaline, it's fun. Um, so that's how we got started at auctions, you know. Um, yeah, I just wasn't finding the stuff anymore that I wanted and that I could envision. The trends, I hate to call them trends, the trends had changed. So with that being said, yeah, the next thing you know, we're doing auctions and we fell in love with auctions. And auctions are hard because you have to go searching for them. They're not necessarily just in the town that you're in by any means. We hit a two hour radius. We travel, Chris researches, we see what's in the general area for that Saturday. We like things on auctionzip.com is where we look it up and we look at things. We're like, okay, is that something that we think is resellable? Is that something, you know, that we think our buyers in our area will want? So there is, there is some research, and I will tell you that Chris does most of the research on Auction Zip, and he finds the auctions, and he saves the items that he thinks that we would be interested that would resell for us. So thank you, Lord, that this is a team effort, um, and that we work well together, because it all takes time. It all takes time. So with that being said, we went to two auctions this weekend, and one auction, we followed this auctioneer. Um, they hold a wonderful auction. They had actually either rented or it was their space, a warehouse. And there was so, I don't always feel comfortable videoing other people. So I didn't really video any of that auction, but we could quickly realize that it was not a reseller's auction, which means the prices were going high. These were collectors. This was a consignment auction that people had some very nice collectible stuff and people were there to buy collections and the only thing that I was bidding on was a marshmallow tin not a campfire marshmallow tin I, now I've learned um, that those are still awesome finds but there's after I found that yacht one I now know that there's a whole world of marshmallow tins and I went to 120 on the marshmallow tin and you guys probably think that's really high price but that marshmallow tin if you get on eBay the ones some of those marshmallow tins will sell for $350. And I know this one was a, I think it was like a Mel Marlowe's marshmallow tin. I didn't, like I said, I didn't film there because there were so many people. But yeah, I'm like, okay, this is just for my personal use. I probably would only display it for Christmas. So I'm like, okay, drop that, 120 type of thing. Okay, I'm done. So we decided we were just going to go to the a neighboring town that had some awesome antique stores. So we went, never underestimate going into an antique store for resale, if you're a resale, not only just for personal home decor pieces, but there's a lot of resellers out there that have booths, especially the end of the year after Christmas, and their booths are 50% off, 40% off. They're just looking to make a profit at the end of the year or they are just getting stock and they just want to turn it over quickly. So yeah, so we did that. And then the next day we went to another auction, <laughs> another auction, which we've been to this one many a times and it's almost two hours away, but we knew we would find some wonderful stuff. What we didn't know is that in the month of December, there really isn't a ton of auctions, <laughs> which we haven't really been to. And it was packed. For the first time ever, I mean, it was elbow to elbow, person in front of person. You couldn't really see what was going on. So I definitely wasn't filming there. Um, and then I just had to wait it out. You have to wait out for people to determine if the prices are going too high and they don't want to wait because you have to stand. There's there, all the few seats that they had were taking. Um, yeah, so you have to figure out, or if the person was just coming from the one item and they left. So it... If you can and you have the time, it is always worth staying to the end of the auction where the prices will go down. They will, they will. They could, that person could just be there for one thing. You know, that's the thing about thrift store shopping and secondhand shopping, garage sales, and estate sales. Where not all of us are looking for the same thing. Not all of us are resellers. Some of us are collectors. Some of us are buying for others. So, you just, you just never know. So that's how the auction world came around to Chris and I, if you, if you wanted to know, and I don't regret it um, at all. So in today's adventure, we're going to be sharing with you 
We started off with the craft booth. The craft booth had grown because furniture was selling at the time that we got a second booth in the craft area side of the antique mall at, at Hog Creek Antique Mall in Allen, Michigan, where we're at. She oh, had a craft side. Now there's not as many crafts nowadays. I don't know if it's because people do craft shows or with COVID that people, you know, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what happened to a lot of the crafters or it's just hard. So I had gotten, we had gotten a second booth for furniture items and then furniture items just like died off. They, people didn't want the painted items or mu as much or they're doing them themselves, um, taking the pieces they have and just painting them into the colors that they want. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, okay. So then you're like, okay. Then I tested out doing an outdoor mall all um, booth. Um, and that, I didn't like that. I didn't like that it wasn't at the same place that I could visit all the time. I didn't like the thought that the stuff was outside. I didn't like this, you know, the weather, the theft, anything to do with that. So that didn't last very long. I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't do that because I just couldn't visit that as often as I wanted to. So then we decided since the furniture wasn't selling so much that maybe we would change it into and bring all that outdoor items that we had in that outdoor because I love rusty crusty galvanized anything that you can decorate your outside garden areas I just have a passion for and I really have a hard time passing them up so we did that we put that in inside and I can mm, yeah that no <laughs> and then, and that stuff sold better at my garage sale our garage sale when we moved here um so then we just kind of had that booth as is and it's not a huge booth it was great for furniture so we were just patiently waiting. We asked if, you know, if there was anybody that was ever going to um, get out of the antique side because with auctions, we were finding that we were, we had a passion for antiques. So we were pur purchasing antiques and a lot of the, tr I'm not saying the true antiquers or like some people look at that sign and they see crafts, so they won't go in. I wish she would take that part of it down. She has, it says antique and crafts, but so some of antiquers don't go into that side. So when you'd put antique items, you can't say on the craft side that they would, you know, like the flippage or selling them. So we were blessed that a lady decided at, at 90 and she'd been there the entire 20 some years. She'd been from the day one that this antique mall opened, decided to retire. So she had, two booths across from each other. So I'm like, that would be perfect. Chris does um, antique tools, tankas, old metal tankas, um, memorabilia like advertising, bar, that kind of stuff. Crockery, he does, he does more crockery than I do actually. Um, so that's where you, it would have been nice because I wanted him to have his own space. I noticed that like the guy, guy boost <laughs> that draw, you know, they didn't have all the pretty decor in it, drag it, men tended to go into those booths more than they would go, you know, with all the pretties and everything. So that was our goal. He, he kind of tested it out a little bit when our kids had a booth for a very short period of time. And then they realized how long it took and how much work it took to keep a booth stocked. So he kind of took over that and he did, he did good. I mean, he was selling and he was doing really good, um, but we wanted to get on the antique side. So when we got that, we had the first booth first in the antique side. And I really tried to gear it more towards all his stuff. I did have some of my stuff in there. Um, you know, trying to get the pull of people to, you know, it's all about displaying and getting it out there and getting people to see what you have and making your booth attractive and, um, getting it in eye view and moving things around and, you know, staging is important, you know, it really is. So then months later, I think it was like six, seven months later, she finally decided to close her second booth was right across. So the next thing you know, we're scrambling. God wink moment, you saw us putting together those <laughs> shelves that we bought from a greenhouse. Got another God wink moment of being blessed. So now at that time we had four booths. Oh my gosh, y'all, four booths. To keep four booths stocked. Ugh. 
<laughs> and, and yeah, it's just too much because I couldn't like the indoor or the outdoor stuff wasn't the galvanized, the bird bass, the stuff like that just was not selling inside. Um, so I'm like, okay. And then I was doing, or I am doing, I don't do as much furniture because it is hard to sell and I love sharing it and I love redoing it. But I will tell you the milk paint, the chippy, cracky, aged paint has been going really well and selling really well. And on the antique side, if I'm making it look antique, I can have like 10% of my booth be like that kind of stuff. I, you know, I'm not really crafty crafty like that, but like that, if I'm making it look old, so that's awesome. So I would now, so that booth that I would had what I thought for furniture and outdoor stuff, I, I wasn't really, we weren't really needing, but I thought, okay, let's do clearance. Let's get rid of like keep it for the holidays, put Christmas in there. Um, and then close it at the end of the year. Well, now it's the end of the year. Slowly, um, the Christmas, I think, is pretty much all gone. I 50%ed it off. I prayed really hard for a piece of furniture, a cabinet that we had redid that was beautiful, but it must have been the color. I had a color that I did that two pieces weren't really selling in that color. Um, I don't know how long you let furniture sit. I, I Chris tells me I'm always like, Yvonne, you always expect everything to sell so fast. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I want to make a profit. I don't know about you all. So, so God wink moment. It sold. Awesome. Because I was afraid we were going to, we didn't have any place for that cabinet. And I thought I was going to have to bring it home, which I, you hate doing y'all, don't you? You hate doing, I did. I marked it down. I am not one to slash a price on a price tag. Um, I will make a whole new price tag and I will lower the price. That's just how I am. I know some people just write it as a discounted price. I just don't do that. I don't know why. I just, I mean, when I have a sale, like the Christmas sale was only Christmas items only. I put a little red star on it and I said 50% off Christmas. So, I mean, everybody do, you just do what works for you. I'm just not a slasher of a tag. I'll just make a new tag. Um, so, so today's venture is we're going to go take out anything that's left in that booth, which really there shouldn't be much at all. And then we're going to fit stock, fit, whatever. And we have been blessed the last three months that our sales have been amazing. I, I don't know if the trend of people buying for Christmas or spending Christmas, you know, retail is so hard. Retail is so unpredictable. So whether it's because we got into the antique side, but I can't really say that because like since we had four booths, we could tell you that things were selling out of each booth. And I am always, I've always said going into this, um, I'm happy to sell an item a day. <laughs> At least, yeah. Yeah, you want to make your rent. You want to double <laughs> what you have to pay in rent for profit or, you know, however that works. You just have to figure out what you're comfortable with number. You know, are you doing this for fun? Are you doing this just for a little extra money or you, because you love to craft or you love to buy and you, you know, you just have to figure out what works for you. And here on the channel, that's all I can do. That's all. I'm not a, I'm not a business professional. I just share what works for me, what we do. I'd hate to steer somebody in the wrong way and, you know, I, I don't want to be blamed for anything, y'all. So anyway, I'm going to share what we got at the antique malls and then what I got at the auction and then we're going to hop over to Hog Creek. I'll share with you the hard thing about stocking at our antique mall is that it is open. That's just how it works. She you have to stock, restock, change booth outs when it's open. I hate doing that when people are there. I don't, because a lot of people don't want to shop in your booths if you're stocking it. So I like to make it really quick. I'd rather go back multiple times than do a whole reset. I'll like pick an area, pick a space, have an idea already in my mind where I want something. I really, you really have to think because I don't want to distract from anybody shopping, especially on New Year's Eve because people are still out there for Christmas <laughs> they're you know with their Christmas money there's still some people celebrate 
Christmas on New Year's Day, they get together with the whole families or those, and you know, Christmas goes all the way till there. So, I mean, I know that about the retail world and I know that about doing hair for, you know, working with the public, people tell me, oh, we don't celebrate to New Year's Day. Perfect. So anyway, let's get to this haul. So at the antique mall, uh, I absolutely love these glove forms. So the booth was 20% off, I believe. Um, I have another glove form that I showed you on my social media, how I got it not to be blue anymore <laughs> by barkeeper's friend. Love this. So there's sometimes there's not a huge profit um, in anything, in any, anywhere you're buying. You know, you can't say there's a huge profit, but sometimes it's about the item that attracts a buyer into your booth. And a set of three vintage glove molds, oh, and I love the size of this beast. <laughs> this is huge. And I love the color of this one. So these retail, you know, $30, $65, depending. And I always like to do a price check of what's selling on eBay. And that's how I, I try to be competitive. You know, I try, try not to overprice. So the profit might be only 20 bucks an item. It might be five bucks an item. You know, still it's a profit. Now, though I'm probably not reselling these that I'm going to make a project piece, but at five bucks a piece with a booth that was 20% off, I know they're not a matching set, but does it matter? I mean, I've had so many compliments, <laughs> and Kelly's probably, Kelly, I hope you're loving on the swag <laughs> um, of that arrangement with the other stirrups that I did. Oh. These are just, yeah, Chris actually spied these. He's like, what do you think? And like five bucks a piece. I'm like, yes, please. And you know, not, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, not everybody's an Ironstone lover. Look at this beautiful picture. So, yeah, I mean, some people just see the plain white and have no desire so 20 bucks ironstone whatever you know with 20 i think it was 20 percent off a lot of the booths that we went to were they had some type between 20 and 50 percent off so you may not get a big haul but you still are picking up items along with this beauty this reminds me of a spice box but the patina on it is gorgeous this is what i try to uh, what i try to make and so, I mean, it, like I said, it was all extremely reasonable. I saw a profit in all of it. And though, even though like, this is probably some type of an iron stone, I love, this is one of my favorite little designs on a little creamer pitcher, love it. And then another booth had a whole bunch of these little mini cookie butter presses. Look, I've never seen that shape, so there was two Two in that shape, oh, love it. And I love the light one, so if you're a collector of butter malt cookie presses. And then this, this one's a little bit, look at the chunky little pusher there. And then a little couple dollar box, because not everybody is excited about boxes. I mean, you can get a box for a couple dollars, or you look at a box, you're like, 50 bucks? <laughs> you just never know. And then the last, like I said, we didn't get a ton. I picked up these little plasticky age signs. I love them. I can see that putting those in a vignette, um, put them in the back of your china cabinets or your hutches that you're displaying on our bookshelf with some of your older, your older pieces. Look at how that all will, it's nice to have a tone on tone. I think cream and white go wonderful together. Now for my next one, um, some of the items are larger, so I'm just gonna take the camera down and share with shared them with I'll share you. with you we had a couple accidents <laughs> so look at this beautiful garden cart unfortunately it had a hairline crack in the glass that we didn't know so it shattered on our two hour drive home so we're going to have like chris said we could do like you could see like it had some chippage can you see? i don't know if you can see the chippage um it happens. I mean, he took the glass out, but two hour drive home with pothole season, it did not survive. 
and we talked about putting wood in it, but I think since it should go outside, we're going to have to do replacement glass. And then our other casualty was this hall tree. The wind caught it when he was bringing it in, and that's all it takes, two seconds, and you have broken glass. But there again, unfortunately, we'll just have to get some new glass, and it happens, y'all. It just is part of the job. But look at that beautiful brass on the feet. So, yeah, it's, it's an easy fix for, I mean, it didn't break the wood, so that's good. So though I was trying to not pick up Christmas items, look at this metal moose. And then I, when I went over to, to make sure that it was metal and not wood, it's actually a crate and barrel. And look at that price tag, $85, I didn't pay $85 for it. It was that finally came up at the end of the auction, one of the, one of the pieces I was waiting for at the end. We did get a dinner bell. Love the color. This is in great shape. Um, Chris sells these in his booth, does really well. He's, he's sold, I think he's flipped two of them now. I love this. I know this is like, ball, you know, not like heavy wood, but it had a whole bunch of different bottles in it so I could have fun with the bottles. I'd probably change the flowers out for something else and have a fun DIY. A lot, like these too. She must have bought these for something new with tags. Um, bottles. I think these are just fun to fill up. Let me flip to the other side though, because <laughs> you can't see. Now they had a, this was all the same estate. There was an owl collection and it pretty much there was a piece on each shelf that I wanted. <laughs> so the next thing you know, I'm buying all the owl and they went, the shelves went for like cheap. They didn't sell anything for under $5 and nobody else was bidding were bidding against me. So each shelf. So I got all these owls, the fun little resin bookshelves. These are cast iron owls. I really loved this huge um, brass owl. Fun little kitty cat. Now these are like a cement. They're he super heavy. So you have an owl and a cat. Another little resin piece. We have some unfinished ceramic pieces. Like it should be painted. It's, I, too cute. Look at those glasses. That is too cute. And then just some fun white pieces that I can resell. Then a lot of music boxes came up. And I'm like, oh, these like... Remind me of German made. I don't know. I, can't, I don't have my glasses on. What does that say? Made in. Oh, I have to get my glasses on <laughs> to read it for y'all. So if you guys can read it, go ahead. I tried to get glasses I could leave on all the time, but apparently my vision at this age is not like that. So where? Oh, Japan. These are made in Japan. I thought they were very, very sweet. Oh, 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 is that not too sweet? And then some little froggies saying so where's this one made um made in japan oh i barely touched it and it's plain is it not beautiful how they go around oh now they're all playing off each i didn't even wind them y'all they're just playing on their own and these little guys came in a planter so like just a fun little pick i guess Huh. I guess they're just going to... I really didn't touch anything to wind it. You guys, I picked them up and that was it. Oh, so you don't wind it. This little thing comes out. I wondered how... I'm like, I didn't wind anything for them to play. So yes, this pulls out. And then you push that back in and it stops. I didn't know that. Now that makes sense. And then they have the same thing. It's a little that you pull out. Oh, it's got a drawer. And you push the drawer in. Way cool. And then this little, I think this is a Hummel, probably music box or a reproduction. I don't know. I'm not a Hummer expert, but that was in the lot. Um, Chris bid on a little Russian nesting doll set of Santa Clauses. I, these sell really well. If y'all, I have a little I had, I guess, I'm going to say I had. I don't know how many are left there after the Christmas season. Got a couple Crocs. Look at that beauty. You know, it's hard to find a Croc that's not chipped, y'all. It really is. Um, 
but that is a beautiful design on there. And then this one, this one could use some iron out or CLR to get the, they must have used it for a potted plant. A couple more owl pieces. This one's actually a, like a dinner bell, <laughs> owl dinner bell. Um, we don't sell these too awful fast, but the butter churns do sell and they do bring a good price. Y'all, I know, I'll sell a couple on eBay, but I, uh, it makes me really nervous when I have to ship cloches. <laughs> but I, I did not want to pass up any cloches, which I'll, hold on, I'll go over to my inventory because we stopped after the antique mall at a Goodwill um, and I picked up that cloche. And yeah, they go, cloches go for good money. So weird that I found one at a, at a Goodwill and then at the auction there were all those. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? And then I thought these were so pretty, these little de dresser mirror, hand mirrors, all oh, the brass on them, they're just beautiful. You know, mirrors are hard to film. And this was hanging and I, I didn't have any idea what it was and I just thought it was beautiful. It's actually a solar light. Well, then I had to roll it over. So yeah, it's a solar light. Just, I just love all the colors of it and how shiny it is. Okay, y'all, our main reason for going is I knew they had a whole bunch of Tiffany styled stained glass lamps. And I knew I was probably going to have to fight for them because they are very nice looking. I will not ship these. I am sorry. Um, I will only sell these kind of things in my booth. They are much too large and too fragile. Like I've sold smaller versions of like the frog one before, but this is much too large and I just, I would hate for something to happen to with them. But yes, yeah, so one at a time. I won't put them all in our booth. I only put one in at a time and they're just, they're gorgeous. The only thing I need to do with them is change out the light bulbs. I don't think that's the best choice for a light bulb. Um, I would like a clear glass one in there. Um, but other than that, yes, it's all, I'll probably put this beautiful one in first. It's quite large. And you would think there was others. I only got this many. She had so many lamps. Um, so I didn't get them all. I got the ones I wanted, luckily. Um, but yeah, they're beautiful. Just beautiful. I don't know. Let me know. Are you a stained glass Tiffany style lamp lover? The frog. I know y'all probably love that one. But yet again, I mean, look at my hand next to it. It's large. It's very large. I did get this little McCoy. Now it's not little actually. It's a McCoy frog. Oh, he's beautiful. I can pop smaller pieces like that. I don't mind popping on, but larger pieces, no. And then this is a funny story. The last auction where I got all the Santas at, we left these three guys behind accidentally. Oh, and bless their hearts, they don't resell them. I called since it was two hours away, we were an hour away when I remembered and they saved them for us. And we said we would be there for the 30th auction. So thank you. Oh, I love those piggy banks because that, that was the end of the auction and I got them. Usually they go for 50, 60, $70, but luckily we stay at the end of the auction where the prices are, the prices go down. <laughs> and then I just wanted this beautiful lamp. I love the stirrup. Somebody made a stirrup lamp. I thought somebody might be interested in that. And then this little resin, I don't know if they're antlers or I think they're more tree branches than anything. Um, lamp came with it. And then I also, I bid on, I've never had one of these chandeliers and we'd have to figure out how to hang it in our booth. I don't have anything to hang stuff, which I need to do time. It's all about time, <laughs> but I love these. I don't have any place for one of them in mine. Battery operated remote control lights would be perfect in this. Perfect. And then the last little thing that we got, we got a lot of these cast iron bugs. Y'all look at that patina. That is the patina I always want to match. Always. They are all like that. So whether the patina was like that or 
she was lucky enough for her outdoor items to turn that color because you can tell they've been outside they've got the rust on them I don't know I, I it's like the perfect patina and then they've got a little painted oops still got the tag on <laughs> dragonfly so now we're going to have the fun of pricing pricing <laughs> buying is the fun part selling is the other fun part but the in-between of looking an item up seeing what its value is is not fun because it's nice if you can find a comp like the uh, sold items on eBay, especially when it's uh, like, you know, an antique or a new purchase good or something like that that you know. Other than that, you just have to figure out what you paid for it and what percentage of profit you would like to make off of it. So that's what Chris is doing right now is he's looking up an item, which is a screw drill. A screw drill. And if you wondered, so we have price, you know, tags. We do an inventory number, write the item down. We're supposed to go through the book. <laughs> we are blessed though that, um, so we're lucky enough that the antique mall where we're at does a daily tally. So they send you an email at the end of the day of what you sold. So if you have an item number on there and then a description, which they prefer, then you know what you've sold. So if you need to bring something back in or not, he has a, a few items that he's going to take into his booth, which I'm glad he, I would never know what to price them. So it's not like all this is going in. I do need to grab some other items from our inventory, which is not huge, um, not huge by any means, but, and then I don't want to have like multiples of the same thing. in. so just have to kind of guesstimate what I want to take in. So even though I wanted to have that one go in, it takes two light bulbs and I only have one light bulb. <laughs> so the blue one's the blue one's the lucky winner that gets to go in because I just don't think these this type of light bulb does those lamp this lamp justice. So luckily now they sell bulbs like this. So it doesn't, ha they're clear. This was left over from our bathroom remodel where the light only took three, <laughs> three lights. So much better. And they were all plugged in at the time of the auction. So I know that they all work. Okay, so now we're at Hog Creek. Let's see what items are left in the booth that we are closing. I told you I really wasn't restocking it. I did bring a shelf over for the shelf that had sold, but really there isn't much left. I kind of let it die down and get emptied out so we knew with the busy time of the holidays that we wouldn't have to move so much. And, you know, 50% off is what it is, and we're just going to take it down, see what will fit over in our other booth, see what I need to. This is the original booth that we had. Um, so I'm going to spend some time moving some things around, moving some furniture pieces around. This is the time where I like, okay, my swans have been there. I'll probably discount those. Like I'll change the tag out, some of the other items that have been there. I, you know, I usually do that every time I make a trip into my booth. It's like, okay, well, how long has this item been there? Do I need it to get it to move? So yeah, at the time of editing it, yep, I... The swans had sold. I lowered the price. A couple of the items that I lowered the price on, then they sold. So it is good to do that. So, but we need to move that brown cabinet that I painted. Y'all had seen that video. Um, so we're going to put these two nesting displays that Chris made. Actually, I love them. Absolutely love these for tall items. And they're, you know, it storage is always the hard part of you know how do you store store things how do you display things you want things to sell but you ha also have to have items to display things on um so there's that so luckily I brought my muscle with me today <laughs> Chris I mean some of the smaller pieces I can move but it is nice um that this is a team effort so if you notice one thing about this booth is I do now have a candle line that I sell, but unfortunately I cannot sell it online. And then a few items that I do have, I do have a few new purchase goods, like just in my new for space fillers, because sometimes you just need a space 
fillers. Um, you know, you just need stock. So I tried that out. I don't know. I didn't really think that those sell sold too well, the new purchase goods. So I probably won't do that too too much. You know, I thought I would just test out the market. <laughs> but nope, I, I much rather find the old pre-loved secondhand items. I think they I think there's a lot of character in there, and I think people like those a little bit better. But I gave it a try. So this is Chris's booth, his rusty, crusty metal tonkas, um, tools, manly stuff. You know, love that bin. People love that bin. And I tell you, he sells more Crocs than I do. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's that space or not. So this is the booth right across I love our display, our glass display we bought from the lady. So it has like swung vases when I'm luckily enough to come across swung vases. Um, I did bring both of the cubbies in because, you know, I love to buy cubbies and that's what I do. We flip for a profit. <laughs> so even small items to large items. That's why we loved this booth. So these shelves are just a blessing, y'all. They fit so much in and I can just organize them and change things out I kind of have like a little okay well this is green this is red this is white this is okay <laughs> yeah no I don't have any OCD at all but I love it so I forgot to do a closing so I had to pop on and inside my house so I hope that you enjoyed today's video a little bit behind the scenes of a booth rental and why I started a booth um reselling I, I do I get almost daily I get an email asking like how and why and like the eBay thing. Um, I do eBay because it was easier. It was, I didn't have to take time to set up a website. I don't really have to manage it. eBay figures out the whole shipping. So that's that. And I only did eBay because you all loved to buy from me <laughs> or asked enough that. Um, so I appreciate each and every one of you for doing that. And that's why I sell on eBay. I won't, I probably will never take the time to make a storefront. I just, everything's about time and I rather go shopping and I rather be creating. <laughs> so there's that anyway. So I hope that you enjoyed today's content. I hope we shared a little bit of, you know, the auction, like check out auctionzip.com, put in your zip code, determine like, the area that you're willing to drive, look at the pictures, study the pictures, because sometimes there's multiple auctions going on at the same time, you know, like the same day. So you have to decide like, oh, okay, so which do I, then they don't picture everything. They just picture what they think will draw people in. So you always have to keep that in mind. And remember, not everybody's going for the same reason. We're all picking something different but oh yeah there's you know you know there's plenty of us you know one or two that like the same thing so anyway thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed um chris and i love you guys so much and we appreciate each and every one of you that have supported us here on our channel so we will see you next time y'all and oh peach is entering <laughs> i thought it was gonna jump on the table so thank you all for watching today's video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to bye